वेलकम टू स्कैल्पल्स एंड फ्यूचर्स द ऑफिशियल यूट्यूब चैनल ऑफ डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ जनरल एंड मिनिमल एक्सेस सर्जरी एट जी एम सी पटियाला दिस न्यू सीरीज ऑफर्स स्टेप बाय स्टेप ट्यूटोरियल्स ऑन क्लिनिकल एग्जामिनेशन इन जनरल सर्जरी डिजाइन स्पेशली टू एम्पावर एन पी बी एस एंड पोस्ट ग्रेजुएट स्टूडेंट्स आर फैकल्टी गाइड्स यू थ्रू एसेंशियल एग्जामिनेशन टेक्निक्स हेल्पिंग ब्रिज द गैप बिटवीन theory and practice welcome to today's presentation on history taking this is a foundation skill in clinical medicine and a crucial part of patient care did you know that sir arthur conan doyle the creator of sherlock holmes was inspired by a real life doctor holmes is a scientific detective but he owes his origin to dr joseph bell a real life detective in a white coat conan doyle took that brilliance and gave it a deer stalker and a pipe just like holmes doctors unravel mysteries starting with one powerful tool the patient's story why we start with history 70 to 80 percentage of diagnoses are based on history alone it is the single most important factor in making a diagnosis it direct the clinician to search for the physical abnormalities before ordering test or scanning simply listening guides most diagnosis start by introducing yourself to the patient and establishing rapport with the patient sit down beside the patient or even on the bed and create the impression that the interview will be unhurried the art of listening let them speak don't interrupt their first few sentences avoid guiding or shaping their story the greatest skill is to listen to what the patient volunteers this is the key to the diagnosis the clinician must not shape elaborate and direct the history into a particular category just so that it fits classical package experienced clinician rarely begin the routine physical examination without some suspicion about the diagnosis keep your questions clear short and simple regarding patient particulars name knowing and calling the patients by his name is impressive as people usually like to be called by their names it shows interest age some diseases conditions are age specific like intersusception meckel's diverticulum hirschsprung disease appendicitis are more common in younger age groups and some diseases like cholelithiasis colorectal cancer benign prostatic hypoplasia are common in older age groups sex and gender sex is the biological classification of a person as male or female based on physical traits gender is how a person sees and identifies themselves regardless of their biological sex some diseases are more prevalent in males such as coronary artery disease inguinal hernias skin cancers like some diseases are more common in females such as cholelithiasis breast cancer and varicose veins pelvic organ related diseases are exclusively seen in females and prostate related issues are exclusively seen in males ask about religion in some cases there are disease patterns linked to religious practices assess social status as diseases like tuberculosis are more common in certain social backgrounds inquire about their occupation which can suggest exposure to specific risk like certain cancers varicose veins or repetitive strain injuries like tennis elbow student's elbow residence is important too as it may point towards endemic diseases like tuberculosis leishmaniasis leprosy be sure to note the source of history and the full address of the patient source of history can be patient or relatives and that should be reliable 
chief complaints the patient's voice major symptoms that prompt the patient to present to hospital and their duration if there are more than one chief complaint list them in chronological order if all the symptoms are simultaneous list them in the order of severity it should be written in patient's own language verify the patient's words do not write any premature diagnosis or opinions you should ask were you perfectly well before this some mentioned chief complaints may be misleading and the patient's problem may be more or less serious than that they mentioned some patients may omit significant symptoms as insignificant or unrelated to their current problem just ask them if there are any other complaints capturing the chief complaints in the patient's own words ensures that we accurately understand their concern and do not overlook potentially serious symptoms which is correct vomiting since 2 days or 4 to 2 days when recording the duration of symptoms use since for a specific date and for to describe a length of time for example pain in the upper abdomen since june 25th or repeated episodes of generalized swelling of the body associated with diminished urine output lasting for 1 to 4 weeks with symptoms free in the wells of 2 to 6 months in between for the last 2 years tell the story history of present illness this section is a well organized full elaboration of the main symptoms from onset of the disease until the time of presentation to the doctor when was the patient last well for each symptom analyze when it evolved its nature duration course and any treatments tried always use the patient's own language and avoid leading questions each symptom starting from the earlier to the late should be analyzed in a separate paragraph expand the patient's complaints like a pro it's helpful to use the socrates and eight form words start by identifying the site of the complaint then ask about its onset the character of the symptom and whether the sensation radiates anywhere else inquire about any associated symptoms that occur alongside the main complaint and note the timing whether it is continuous or intermittent discover what factors exacerbate or relieve the symptoms and evaluate their severity additionally consider the aid elements ask about aggravating or relieving factors assess the impact on the patient's daily life and determine if there is any distress or disability caused by the complaint this thorough approach ensures a comprehensive understanding of the patient's issue leading to better diagnosis and care ruling out silently the negative history listing everything that is not present only document negative symptoms that helps him it will rule out the differentials it will narrow down your diagnosis it can assess severity or progression this negative history will helps in excluding disorders of relevant organs and systems to a great extent state all negative history together at the end of the history of presenting illness do not describe negative findings after very individual complaint group them as a single paragraph or bullet list after elaborating the positive symptoms negative history has its own importance by specifically ruling out related big problems you guide both yourself and listener away from unlikely causes narrowing in on the most probable diagnosis the patient's medical baggage the past history when assessing a patient's past history it is essential to collect detailed information about previous illness focusing on their timing frequency duration and management document any past hospitalizations ongoing chronic diseases like diabetes or hypertension and details about their duration treatment control and follow up obtain a complete surgical history including types and dates of operations and any complications record any history of blood transfusions noting the reasons timing and any reactions lastly clarify allergies by asking about the substance involved and the nature and timing of the reactions collecting these details is vital 
as they can significantly shape diagnostic and treatment decisions. Medication matters. The drug history. When taking a drug history, it is important to gather detailed information about all current and recent medications, including each drug's name, preferably generic, dose, frequency, duration, and the reason for its prescription. Not any observed effects or side effects. Inquire about the use of herbal or any traditional remedies and record any known allergies to medicines, foods or contrast materials, along with their reactions. Document missed doses, use of alternative therapies and any adverse responses. Assess the patient's compliance with their prescribed regime. This thorough approach ensures safer prescribing and optimal patient care. Habits and Lifestyle When evaluating a patient's habits and lifestyle, it is important to ask about key factors that can impact health. Inquire about their diet, including whether it is vegetarian or non-vegetarian, and the general nature of their meals, it is oily or spicy. Assess smoking habits, noting current or past usage and calculating pack years for tobacco exposure. Systematically ask about alcohol use using tools like the CAGE questionnaire to screen for problematic drinking. For female patients, obtain a menstrual history as part of the lifestyle assessment. Documenting these lifestyle patterns is essential as they often have a direct influence on disease development and overall health. Bloodline clues The family history When taking a family history, it is important to ask about any similar conditions in the family that might affect the patient's risk for infectious or inherited diseases. Inquire about the health of parents, siblings, and children, noting any chronic or congenital illness among them. It's essential to ask about consanguinity, as marriages between close relatives increases the risk of inherited disorders. Gather details about any deceased relatives, including their relationship to the patient, age at death and cause. Also, specifically ask about common hereditary conditions like diabetes or hypertension, noting their age of onset in family members. This process helps identify genetic or environmental factors that may influence the patient's health. The Modified Kupuswami Scale is a widely used tool in India to assess a family's socio-economic status, which strongly impacts access to healthcare and overall health risk. It evaluates three key factors, the education and occupation of the family head and the family's monthly per capita income. Each factor is scored based on set categories, such as education level or job type, and the scores are summed to classify the family into upper, upper middle, lower middle, upper lower, or lower socio-economic classes. This systematic approach helps healthcare providers better understand and address the social factors influencing family well-being in the Indian context. Immunization History In children, always ask about immunization history. Check whether vaccinations are up to date and if any reason vaccinations have been given. When presenting a case, use clear language and short sentences. Speak clearly, confidently and slowly in a clear and audible voice. Tell the history like a story to help the listener visualize the illness. Stick to chronological order. State all negative history together. Be aware of timing. And always be prepared to summarize. End with a provisional diagnosis or possible differentials based on the information you have. Clinical thinking exercise. 22-year-old male presents with abdominal pain for two days which started as a dull ache around the umbilicus and gradually shifted to the right lower quadrant. He also complains of nausea, one episode of vomiting, low-grade fever and loss of appetite. No history of urinary or bowel symptoms. No prior surgeries or similar complaints in the past. On examination, he is febrile with tenderness, guarding and rebound tenderness in the right iliac fossa. Rosings and obturated signs are positive. Bowel sounds are sluggish, no palpable mass.
let us know your diagnosis in comment section. Scan this QR code or click on the link in the pinned comment for getting a handout on history taking. Subscribe to this channel to get notified about the second part of this video on which we will discuss about general physical examination. Thank you.